guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's episode two of our best of the best, one board quiver in the hybrid board category. This is gonna be fun. Sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. Each of these five boards are the best of the best in this particular category. And if you haven't watched episode one, I highly recommend it. It's an introduction to each board and how it became a finalist. The point of this series is to give you guys that ask me all the time, what's the best board I've ever ridden? And then we have to go into wave size, board category, and that brings me to the hybrid outline. I just wanna reiterate that this category, they usually come in a shorter, wider, thicker package. So when we look at this outline, this board's like 5'3", and it has a wide nose, its wide points a little forward from center, there's more foam under the chest, and the whole point of these um, boards in this particular category is to make them good paddlers, they all carry excellent speed, and they're all user-friendly and easy to surf. Now, what makes this particular five finalist boards unique I usually think about this outline and say, oh, small wave groveler, because it has this sort of outline. However, each of these boards blew my mind in overhead surf, and that's what makes these boards so unique. Now, as we dive into the process to picking my favorite board, I wanna remind you guys, each of these boards are favorites. They're the best. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I'm gonna have to get a little bit critical in my process of picking the best board. Now I talked about in episode one, having a criteria. Now what's important to me might not be as important to you. Let's just say you don't surf like I surf, maybe you don't surf similar waves, and it's hard for you to relate to me and what is important for me to pick my favorite. However, I believe the criteria in each category is important to us all. So I'm gonna go over those real quick. I have speed, projection, rail to rail, flow, carving, drive, pocket surfing, the forgiveness of a board, small waves, and overhead waves. Now, I'm gonna judge these on a scale of one to 10, and I'm gonna start with the pod mod. Now, I mentioned that I studied the footage. I put all the footage together on all the boards. So, when I remember what it felt like, I also wanna see on video what it looks like. Now, one of the things that I really liked about the pod mod is that I went down from the 5.4 to the 5.2. And what I really liked is it had that performance, it gave me the traction and the hold, and because it was so short at 5.2, it was super agile in the pocket. Now I don't have agility in my criteria. And the reason I don't have that is because the shorter the board, the more agile it's going to be, and that doesn't always translate from the pod mod that might come in at 5.2 and then the chili coming in at like 5.5. So those are certain things that you need to keep in mind for yourself. Some of you guys are really tall and you're skinny and you need a groveler that fits the criteria for yourself on how much rail line and how short the board is. But agility to me is super important as the waves get into that chest or even waist time below. So the pod mod, I wanna talk about its speed here. On the speed, on the scale of one to 10, I gave it a seven. I feel like it has that rocker that gives me the traction. So pushing in overhead surf, it really shined bright for me there. On projection, seven. Now, I wanna talk about projection. It's about linking maneuvers together, using a section to get over it, to get down the line, to beat a section, the board's carrying that kind of speed. And because it was so short, I really felt like I could put it where I wanted quickly. And that's one of the things I loved about the pod mod. Okay, rail to rail, the board turned over great. I kind of feel like because it was 5'2 and it's so short, it was almost twitchy. So it didn't have as good a flow as I would like because it had less rail line. So the board was super responsive and I could probably split the difference between the 5.4 and the 5.2, which are the stock dims, and get the 5.3. Guys, this one inch in length, for me, could be the deciding factor of where this board lands in the best of the best. So it's super important to get the right size and get it dialed. All right, the next thing 
is flow. I'm giving it a 7.25. I liked how it went from turn to turn. But at times it looks like to me, I'm kind of trying to settle into the, the turns on a regular basis when I studied the footage. Now on carving, especially backside, it had that hold and traction and I really liked the pod mod. And when we talk about carving and traction, I feel like it's most important backside because at the peak of a turn backside, I even out my weight and that's when the board will let go. And if it's got overhead surf and it doesn't have that traction, like it does, it wouldn't be in the best of the best in this category. So the pod mod is excellent when it comes to the carving. And then when I talk about carving, that's putting the board on rail and pushing, that leads me right into drive. Now the fins that we pick in each board will give a board more drive. However, the pod mod does have some rocker in the tail and we use that rocker to set the rail, give us traction hold and push. And I really believe that the pod mod has that kind of performance with the overall rocker in the board. So on the drive, I gave it a 7.75. Now pocket surfing at 8.25, it's pretty high on the scale between the five boards. And I'll tell you why I've been touching on the rocker of the board, the hold, even though it's short at 5.2 and I don't have much rail line. I felt like when I was surfing overhead waves, I could push hard and it had that resistance in the hold that I like. Now, forgiveness, and, and really for me, it's about the board category. Remember, with its um, wide nose and wide point forward from center, it promotes carving. And these type of boards have some liability to them. They can catch up in here. I didn't notice that at all, or very little with the pod mod. Why? It's 5.2. Now, on the 5.4, there was a bit of catching up here. And the longer I win in this board, and I think that's going to carry across the board to any of these, the more performance turns you want to do and the wider nose and how far that wide point is up from center will cause problems. And we'll talk about more of that in a minute. So for forgiveness, I'm giving it a seven out of 10 small waves because it's so short, I can put it where I want quick. And that kind of offsets the rocker. I'm going to use the rocker to go rail to rail. And if I keep the board moving, there's no real limit to how much speed I can generate with this board in smaller waves. Now on um, overhead waves, I even put it in super hollow waves and this board is incredible in overhead surf for me. And I really felt like that's one of the main places that the pod mod separates itself from some of the other boards in this final five. And I gave it an eight out of 10. Now, as I go into the seaside, I want to talk about the speed right off the bat at 8.25. When I reviewed this board, it was the fastest board I had ridden to date in the hybrid category, probably out of any board that I had ridden. So the speed on this board is next level projection. Remember that's just about getting down the line. This board likes to attack more diagonal. So hitting sections to get to the next section, I felt like it did that very well. It really projection and speed complement each other relatively well. I'm giving it a 6.75. Now rail to rail, I'm going to give it a six. And it's really about flow for me. The board rolls over on rail to rail, but flow for me, because the wide points more forward than center, there's more foam up in here. I felt like it was catching up in this area a lot more often. So much so on the rail to rail felt good. But when it catches and the water bogs the nose area here, it messes with flow. So I'm giving it a 6.5 on that. On carving, I talk about this board wanting to go down the line. It really liked to carve and a lot of clean carves. As long as I'm surfing it more off the tail, I would get a nice crisp roundhouse or carve. But anytime I was surfing it more off the front foot, it was catching up in here. So on carving a 6.75 on drive, I'm going to give it a 6.75. And remember guys, that's about putting it on rail and being able to push. It always had the traction. I rode the bulk of the, re of the review on the Machado quads, which have a lot of drive. There's a lot of fin back there. Now moving it to a performance fin changed the lines it was drawing, but it still had that drive where I felt like it could push through my turns and get that speed I'm looking for. 
So on pocket surfing, I'm gonna give it a six. That's where I really feel like I struggle on this board. Coming off the bottom front side or back side, it doesn't really have a good amount of rail line to do that top to bottom, like a looping bottom turn and coming, coming up into the pocket and squaring it off. I did change the fins and rode the seaside with a more high performance quad that I trust and it was drawing more performance lines. So we can tweak and alter the boards with the fins we put in to get more drive, to get more pivot, to get up in the pocket faster. However, this board struggled the most top to bottom compared to the other four boards. So that's why I'm giving that a six. Now, forgiveness. I said in the beginning of this episode that all these boards are forgiving. They're all user-friendly and easy to serve. Now, when I'm starting to nitpick and get critical on a board like I am with the Seaside, that's because I'm comparing what this board felt like and how it was catching up in here, making it not forgiving for somebody who surfs like me compared to the other four boards. I'm gonna give it that six out of 10. Now, small waves, I'm giving it a 6.5 because I like to surf small waves more top to bottom. It's carrying the speed, it's got the projection, but this is hindering me from surfing the way I wanna surf with the most amount of flow. And every time I have the flow going from turn to turn, it'll keep my speed and my projection up. All right, now overhead waves, I'm giving it a 6.75. I really felt like didn't matter what fins I had in the board, it had the hold, it had the traction, and I could push through turns, and I had confidence off the bottom and through my rail turns. Now diving into the Chili Black Vulture 2, this board on speeds coming in at 8.75, this is the fastest board out of the five. It didn't matter if I was riding it in bigger surf or small surf, I'd stand up, it had that get up and go speed, it had that one pump and it would just take off. So the fastest board and then projection, they kind of go hand in hand for me. The 8.75 on speed, I'm giving it eight on projection because I was able to clear sections, come off the whitewash, get around a section. There was really nothing slowing me down about this board and it had that projection. That's why it's getting an eight out of 10. Rail to rail, I'm giving it a 7.25. I really like, there's something about the outline. The wide point might be a tad in front of center, but it's very subtle. So doing nice looping bottom turns, uh, both front side and back side, gave it that good rail to rail feel and I had that hold. Now flow, I'm giving it a 7.5. When I look at the footage from turn to turn, it's relatively seamless. I felt like the board allowed me to be radical because it's carrying so much speed and the flow from rail to rail really suited my style of surfing. Now carving, I'm gonna give it an eight. I talked about maybe there being a little bit straighter rail line back here. I find that it's relatively even straight right here. So going down the line was solid. And I think the one I wrote in the review was 5'5". Five, five. Don't quote me on that. But that extra two inches in length compared to maybe the 96, the, the Bobby Quad, the Seaside, and the Pod Mod, I could feel that rail line. And it really had that. Um, holding the ability to give me that carving at an 8 out of 10 there. Now drive, I'm going to give it a 7.75. What's interesting is I don't measure rocker, but I really feel like the Black Vulture 2 probably have less rocker compared to the 96 and the Bobby Quad and the Pod Mod. However, because I have extra rail line, I've got more rail in the water and it gives me something to push off of. And changing this from a 2 plus 1 in overhead surf to a thruster gave me that drive and that hold able to push hard and this board just kept giving me speed every time I put it on rail. Now pocket surfing at 7.75 it kind of felt like I was riding a small weight performance board. It's not super wide up in here. I never felt it really catch up in this area. Like I said I really gelled with the Chili Black Vulture 2 and all I can say is this board's fast and it gave me all the ability to do the turns I wanted to do. So on the pocket surfing at 7.75, the forgiveness, because it's not catching up here, the board's easy to surf, I'm giving it a 7.5, guys. Small waves, okay. So for me, I'm giving it a seven, and I didn't push it in 
um, shoulder high and under too much. However, the speed is what I'm looking for in smaller waves. I will say this, because it's longer, when I get into that chest high and smaller wave, the length is going to give me some fits there. It's not going to be as quick in transition compared to some of the other boards. However, for you guys that are taller, that need more rail line, or if you switch from board to board and it's not a one board quiver, getting on a board like the Black Vulture 2 makes it easy to transition from board to board because I'm riding it at 5.5 five and then my high performance short board and my daily driver is 5.7 compared to getting on a 5.2 or 5.3 seaside going to a 5.7 daily or high performance short board. I think you're getting what I'm saying here. I hope you are. Overhead waves. The bulk of the time I rode the, the Chili, it was overhead. This board could do no wrong. I'm giving it an, uh, a seven on overhead surf. It had the traction, the hold, the drive, and I had confidence on the BV2. Now, as we go into RNF 96, jumping right into speed, I'm giving it a 7.5. It has that easy, quick get up and go, and it even has good speed from turn to turn as I surf top to bottom. We'll get into that in a minute, but projection, both front side and back side, utilizing the wave to get down the line, staying in the pocket, very easy to do on the 96. And I felt like it was very user friendly in that particular aspect of projection and speed. And then rail to rail, I'm giving it an 8.75. This board rolls over and it has that flow, that speed. So rail to rail and flow kind of go hand in hand. I'm gonna give it a 7.75 on flow it never really caught up here. There's something about the entry rocker. I don't know if it's more than what I'm getting on the rest of the boards. Even in steep sections, coming off the bottom and doing a top turn, I never really experienced water flooding the deck and the board bogging. Now carving, I am giving it an 8.25. The whole point of what I'm feeling underfoot is the board likes to be on rail. It enables me to push whether I'm riding it as a twin or a twin plus trailer, small waves, big waves, it had the complete package for me. Now, on the drive, I'm giving it an 8.5. And drive is something that, for me, is super important that when I put the board on rail and I'm able to push, it's also giving me the confidence. And I remember riding the 96 and well overhead surf with a lot of open face. And whether I was riding the light speed or the PU poly, the board settled down nicely. The PU poly and overhead surf felt super solid under underfoot in bigger waves. Um, pocket surfing, I'm giving it an 8.5. I felt like this is where the 96 separated itself from the rest of them. I remember surfing um, some choppy waves backside. And when I say choppy, it had texture. And I'm coming off the bottom and able to do a looping backside bottom turn and get square right up in the lip and then come right back down both backside and front side this board was next level in the pocket giving me uh the ability to do high performance surfing in the pocket um, forgiveness i'm going to give it an eight i feel like the board design overall was very easy to surf like i said nothing in the liabilities that i picked up on on the 96 up in the nose area and then on small waves i'm giving it a 7.5 um, obviously, the Chili and the Seaside are carrying more speed. However, what I liked about the 96 is when the waves got smaller, I can run it purely as a twin fin and not have a center fin in, and that's going to not have as much drag. So going on the 96 and smaller waves, keeping it super fun, fast, creative, that's what I love about riding it purely as a twin fin. Now, on overhead waves, I'm giving it an 8.75. It's the highest markings of all the boards. I really could not find the top end of this board. I think putting it in hollow, punchy, really steep beach break, riding it in Hawaii, any place like this for a travel board, this is the top end um, setting the bar. The RNF 96 is excellent in overhead surf. Now, as we go into the Bobby Quad, I want to talk about the speed. I'm giving it a 7.75, this being a quad, carrying that quick get up and go speed, both front side and back side with ease. Now, the projection, I'm giving it a 7.25. I really felt like it's got that pivot to come off the bottom, get me into the lip real quick so that way I could get through a section, 
to make sure I'm staying in some open face to surf top to bottom and do the turns I want to do. On rail to rail, I'm giving it an eight. There's something about the bottom contours, keeping the quads engaged, the way the tail's working here with it having kind of like a double diamond tail where less rail lines giving me that pivot. And I feel like as the board's on rail, it's giving me that traction. Now flow, I'm giving it a 7.75. And if you look at it, the 96 and the Bobby quad are the highest markings in flow. And I remember one left on the Bobby quad where it just came squirting with speed from top to bottom with very little effort. And the wave, I wouldn't say it was weak or mushy. It just kind of had more of a flatter face. And the Bobby quad just kind of cruised through that with good speed. On carving, I'm giving it a 7.5. Like I said, I really felt like um, the ability for the board's um, tail design and its medium exit rocker, I never felt like the board was going to slide out. I had the confidence, even in some overhead surf, that I put the board on rail and I could push. Now, drive, I'm going to give it an 8. There's something about a quad for me where you've got the two fins working on one rail at a time plus the board design. I really felt like the Bobby quad has something special in the drive category. And I wasn't even using um, a raked fin in the front. So if I wanted more drive, I used the neutral template. I could even add like the AM fin or a fin with a lot of rake and even get more drive and take this board to another level with pushing off the rails. So pocket surfing, 7.5. If you watch the review, I said there's something special about the way the Bobby quad is pivoting as a quad. I want to surf top to bottom. I felt like I could do a nice bottom turn and get up into the lip quick. Maybe not as solid as the 96, but it's right there. Now on the forgiveness, 7.75. I hate to bring this up, but I was coming off a major surgery with my hip replacement and getting on the bobby quad it was super forgiving super easy for me to surf and i felt like the more i spent time on this board the better and better and better i was surfing and i could feel like my surfing was progressing faster on this board compared to the other boards that i was testing and riding at the time all right so small waves i'm giving it a 7.25 i feel like it's got that speed it's carrying that one pump and it gets you right where you want to be and i really feel like on the smaller waves it was better than what i thought it was going to be even though it's carrying that hybrid outline i feel like a lot of you guys will love this board as a groveler and overhead waves 7.5 i would have liked to have pushed it more in bigger surf but the waves that i had overhead and i thought man is this board going to hold especially backside sometimes a quad can re give you a little bit more release and not hold as good as i'd like but it had the hold and i would say an overhead surf this board's excellent guys we have a winner congrats to matt biolas and the folks that lost with the rnf 96 it was close let's look at the flow chart and see how close it is on the 96 remember out of a possible 100 points it scored 81.25 for first place the Black Vulture 2 came in second at 76.5 points. The Bobby Quad came in third at 76.25 points. What's separating second and third is 0.25, so it was close. On fourth place, we've got the Pod Mod coming in at 74.75 points, and the Seaside coming in fifth at 66.25. Remember, guys, surfboard reviews and what works best for me is subjective to what the board feels like underfoot and what I want this board to do for me. Having the flow chart with the criteria, this will help you guys pick what's important to you. Remember speed. If that's the most important thing, you surf a real mushy wave and speed's the most important, you got the Black Vulture 2 and the Seaside. Always refer back to the flow chart so that way it will help you look at these boards side by side and help you pick what's best for you. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and our series of the best of the best one board quiver in the hybrid board category. I had no idea the 96 would be the winner until we ran the numbers in the criteria. All five boards are epic. You guys will be stoked to ride any of them. If this was a one board quiver for me, it was a travel board, riding it in well overhead or riding it in small surf purely as a twin fin, 
This board's so fun. Special shout out thanks to all the shapers for sending in the boards, not only for review, but for the best of the best episodes. Look, if you like the show, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode, and give us a thumbs up if you like our content. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.